Not as much as a twinge. <laughs> I'm sure I panicked calling you too soon. Yeah. Is it normal? I mean, in the third trimester to... I mean, because with the twins, I... Okay, okay, I promise. You know, I just... I have a... Uh, one last chapter, and then I'm finished, and and then I'm coming home with the with the boys. All right, and I, I promise I will call you if I, if I feel anything out of the ordinary. Okay, thanks. All right, bye. All right, Armand, where did we leave off with you? Let's see. Okay, if you go back to Clarissa, then everybody's happy. At least that's what the readers want. Unless you find out about Christine's baby. <laughs> so what would happen if you had this uncontrollable urge and you just this pull and drew you to, to Christina's door? <laughs> uh, yeah, right, Blake. That's about as likely as Ross showing up at your doorstep right now. All right, suck it up. Suck it up, Blake. You know how this story ends. I'm sorry. Is everything okay with you? What's going on with you? I was just about to finish my book when you showed up. Now I know how it ends. Good evening. Uh, reservation for two from Marler? Yes. The other party still hasn't arrived yet. All right, thank you. Boy, I'll tell you what. This one deal could set us up for about the next nine months. You're going to do great with Congresswoman Stone. She's used to dealing with... Congressmen and their aides, you'll be a breath of fresh air. Specs. You want to go over the specs? Do you have them? This is a business meeting, right? Oh, yeah. Just check. Yeah. I just, no, it's, you know. it's dinner. It's dinner. Right. Just, just because you invited me doesn't mean it's a date. We're not ready. No, nobody's no, ready for no. that. No, no. Dates are off limits. Yeah. Not that I listen to everything that my shrink says, but that she suggested it would be a bad idea for me to focus on anybody else right now, and I happen to agree, so... A member of the Walking Wounded is not such a bad dinner companion. No. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, Josh. Hi. Hi, excuse me. I won't keep him from business for more than a minute. Just wanted to let you know that on Christmas, any time after 3 o'clock is good. What? You can come over any time after 3 o'clock. Reva didn't tell you that uh, Holly and I are throwing a party? Yes. Uh, yes, she did, actually. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, good. You're working for it. I hope you and Reva can make it. Uh, thank you. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Okay. I guess it's hard to tell people. Yeah. Yeah, it is, especially around the holidays. I, I should have said something to Ross. I just didn't feel like explaining... You know what? Why don't we uh, go somewhere else where sure. there's a little more privacy? Yeah. Is that okay? You're with you? Good. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Ross, hi. Thanks for meeting me. Yes. How's Michelle? Uh, desperate. We both are. Now, before you say anything, just let me say what I have to say, please. We did hire a lawyer. He's very good. But Michelle is not happy with him. She wants you, Ross. You're the only lawyer that she trusts. And the way things look right now, Ross, you could be our only hope. I must be crazy. When Bill told me about your accident, how they found you, I thought it might be you. That you were in Ben's apartment. That maybe you saw something, or he told you something. Or that maybe you could have shot Ben. Excuse me, what are you doing here? What happened? I, I just... Why do you look like that? What's going on? I was just visiting. I, I came to visit with Vanessa. I was just sitting there. Did you notice any change? What happened?
No, Richard, you know where I am. The ball's in your court now. talked after well after you telephoned and well the fact of the matter is she's been very upset uh, about the way you two left things and that's all you talked about that's why we're here that's one of the reasons we're here with everything happening with you and Josh things need to be clear so there are no misunderstandings and you came to this decision jointly I don't want to be the cause of another rift in this family, Riva. We all need to talk. No, we don't. This is between you and Riva. Every... Beckoning to marry her. Now, will he give up everything? You put Brooke Logan out of your mind and you go out there and marry me. Or drop the bomb. I'm sick of the line. I'm sick of hiding how I feel. The bold and the beautiful. What happens next is everything. Danny, I am the victim's brother. That is a monumental conflict of interest. Not if she waves her right to an appeal, no, Ross. No, she should not do that. She should not waive her right to appeal. You knew about this, didn't you? You knew that, and you just still didn't offer. No, I didn't offer. Why the hell? Why not? I am the victim's brother. <sighs> Don't you think that that would just help with the jury? It could hurt, too. Now listen to me, it is common knowledge that there was very bad blood between me and my brother. Now some people could see a plot in there to keep the real killer from going to jail. That's all right, we'll take that risk, Ross. I won't. No. Don't you think I want to help Michelle more than I'm doing? I have known that girl all her life. Ed Bauer is my best friend. I'd do those, anything to help Those her. are all reasons that you shouldn't take the case. Well, there's a big one why I shouldn't. If I mess it up, if something happens, Michelle is going to have to accept the conviction. There will be no appeal ever because she will have waived that right. I understand that. So does Michelle. But Michelle trusts you. Yeah. And that means that I trust you. And we trust that you would not make any mistakes. Well, it is a moot point because I've accepted a civil case in Philadelphia. It starts at the beginning of the year. What, you're just you're going to take off for a couple months to argue some case about, about real estate? Something boundaries? like that, yes, Danny. Please, don't close the door on me. This is... insisted that I move home with him. That's great! And Holly and the twins. Last about ten minutes. Well, actually, no, a couple of days. Wait, wait, so, so you left? Why? Oh, Harley got so intense. I mean, we started to get close again. Oh, oh, you got close. Yeah, I can see why you'd run away from Harley, that I thought about this. I thought about telling him the truth. I thought about telling him about the baby. Which you should have done, which was the right thing to do in the first place. Well, I, I thought about giving my novel a happy ending, too. You know, have Armand go back to his pregnant wife, Christina. But it turns out that his pregnant wife, Christina, is the one that pushed Armand like and Clarissa together, together in the first place. Please shut up about the book. Why don't you tell me about Ross? Why did you leave? Harley, you were right. They were not in love. 
When I followed them to Chicago, what I thought I saw when I was spying on them in Springfield, they were not in love. They were just good friends. I knew it. They were just good friends. I were. You see, after spending all this time together, taking care of the boys, being pushed together thanks to yours truly, why they did fall in love. Are you kidding me? When Ross told me how he felt about Holly, I just, I couldn't take it. And I grabbed the kids and I ran up here. Wait, does Ross know that you're here? No, that was the point. Okay. I, woo! Okay, I can't, I can't do this anymore. What? I can't. What are you doing here? Well, you and Vanessa aren't exactly friends now, are you? Matt, I saw Bill today, and you may not believe this, but I care about him. I care what happens to his family, about his troubles, as I care about yours, Rick. Uh, my sister told me that uh, you came by to see her. Does that surprise you? Well, I figure you believe that uh, my sister killed Ben, especially all the bogus evidence that's out there. I've learned not to trust the obvious. Sometimes answers come from surprising places. Are you sure there's no change? Matt, we just gave her the medication. You have to be patient. You can't give up, Matt. There's always hope. Well, this is just too embarrassing that you had to pay for the hot dogs. I don't know what happened to my wallet. Oh, that was I'm such sorry. a likely story. <laughs> <laughs> a cheap date. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, look at those scales I've got. That one of the blue coat is really good. Oh, yeah. That's very a great nice. Idea. <sighs> you know, I cannot believe you actually wanted a hot dog. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, it just doesn't seem like your style, that's all. No, I was never royalty. Okay, besides, these are deluxe gourmet. It's just a run in the car. Oh, yeah, they're wonderful. I can't believe I grew up without these. You, you never had these? Well, that's a pretty American thing. And you grew up in San Cristobal, right? Yeah, in the capital. Ah. But I was still pretty provincial. And my family, um, my dad was a fisherman, and my mom worked in a little shop during tourist season. I don't even think we'd be considered middle class here, so there were no trips to the States or anything like that. I mean, it always sounded so exotic to me, trips to the States. Did you get along with them? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah? That wasn't easy. Why do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> My parents were hard-working, decent people that just didn't expect a lot out of life, so that's exactly what they got. But that's not what you wanted. No, no, I lived a fabulous, exciting life <laughs> in my head. I see. Mm -hmm. And I was really cocky. You know, wh why is it that beautiful women always say that? I don't get that. Well, I, do, I don't know. <laughs> I can't speak for anybody else. I just know that I, I was this tall by the time I was 11. All the boys were like... Oh, Pure. yeah, I remember those days very well. Well, it was murder for the girls, Fondly. buddy. Let me, yeah, <laughs> let me tell you. And uh, I, I don't know. I just, I was all elbows and knees, and, and I couldn't talk to anybody. And, um... <laughs> I read a lot, and I, I wrote these um, these really elaborate plays. You know, they always took place in some beautiful world capital, and um, I was usually a spy or a rock star, or sort of a, a, a rock star double agent kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, Her oh. Majesty's Secret Service. Ah, there you go. And I used to make my, my brother and sister act the plays out with me. My sister Marissa always had to play the bad guy. Well, you know, the bad guy is usually the better role. Well, maybe, but she was so sweet. And it, it, was, it was a stretch for her. <laughs> you know what? All she ever wanted in life was, was a family. You know, and she got it. A wonderful husband and a beautiful little boy. Jonathan. Mm -hmm. You know, Reva, uh, she uh, she thought of, of them as wonderful people, and uh, I, I really, I think that she she felt she couldn't have done better than she did with them for Jonathan's parents. I'm sorry. I guess we just can't get away from this, can we? Hey, Cassie, Cassie, hang on. Where are you going? 
I want you to be here. I, I'll be here. I'm going to be on the porch. Waiting for you. Cassie. Look, uh, I wouldn't have come here if you didn't ask me, you know. I promise you that I... Don't. Okay, because you need to talk to her. So don't promise me anything. Just do what you have to do. Cassie doesn't seem to think that. She thinks that this is about me and you. Well, I don't agree. Then why did you come, Richard? Oh. We will continue with part two of Guiding Light. The Swish CBS Tonight. And what are you doing out here? I mean, I thought you were supposed to be marrying the guy. He has to talk to her, and I have to know. Well, I think she's still in love with him. So do I. You have nothing to say. You called me, Riva. Here I am. Because Cassie pushed you into it. Josh and I have separated. That, that is none of my business. No, I believe it is your business because, you see, I can't seem to erase you from my mind. And I've lied to everyone. I've lied to Josh. I've lied to Mara, Cassie, Billy. Anyone who asked. They all wanted me to be honest about my feelings for you. But that really wasn't true because there was really one answer that they wanted to hear. And that was that I didn't care about you anymore. I do care. Because when I look at you, I start to remember things. When I look at your face, and I remember how you looked when you first woke up in the morning. I see you dance, and I remember how it felt to have your hand in the sun. denied all that and I ended up hurting everyone I loved including you because you kept pushing and insisting that I still loved you and I shoved you as hard away as I could but you were right Richard to be married. Not a marriage. And I won't let you do that to my sister. Please, Richard, don't involve her in this until we know. Until we know what? I don't think either 
one of us can go on with our lives until until we find out if there is something here what do you propose that we do is give ourselves a chance either we find out that it's over or either at the cemetery or at the ice cream store the night of the murder. I tried going after this witness. Yeah, I heard about that. What were you thinking? She's lying. The fact that she took off proves that she's lying. Not to the police, it doesn't. Oh, I'm desperate. I tried to get Michelle to divorce me so that what? she... Because what? I don't want her to walk into that trial as Santos. That won't work. I don't know, that's what my lawyer said. And then he thought that maybe we could offer myself up as a suspect. Michelle and I both had a motive. We both had access to the physical evidence. Because then you, in reasonable doubt, yeah. Grant suggested this? Yeah. It's dumb. It's a very bad idea. Well, his only other idea was to make Michelle do a plea bargain. She'd spend 10 years in jail, at least. That's why she needs you, Ross. If you can imagine Michelle in jail, she would die. I'm not going to let that happen to her. All right, Danny. You are not thinking. It's all emotion, and you don't need that right now. I'm, 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 I'm wasting my time, aren't I? You obviously don't understand. Yes, I do understand. Probably better than you do. I can't talk to Ross. Fine, I will. No, Harley, don't. You know what? You know what? Why don't you ask me what I've been doing for the past week, Blake? You were in San Cristobal. Exactly. And there was a plane crash, and Philip and Jim and Beth were missing for days. Oh, my God. For days. You know what I did? I sat around listening to radio reports of rescuers telling me whether they were going to bring my husband down off a mountain. Harley! Yes, it was terrible. I'm sorry. No, don't I'm be sorry. sorry. That's not the point of this. The point is, stop sitting up here mucking around with Clarissa and, and Armand, these fictional characters who don't mean anything. Your real love of your life, your living, breathing love of your life is down there at home and he's about to become a father again any second and you should be together and you should stop wasting time. It, it, it's not that simple. Yes, it is. It is that symbol. You said that Holly and Ross just got together. Well, stop it before it goes any further. I would still be stopping it. Did you get that? I would still be stopping it. It doesn't matter when it started. I would be stopping it. I would be ruining my mother's life. I would be doing exactly what I usually do. My same selfish thing. You know, I'm the one that ruined my marriage in the first place. So, for once, I am going to be bigger than what is happening to me. All right? What, uh, back to plan A? Yes. I'm going to have this baby alone. And Ross and Holly are going to go off into the sunset. I can't believe how much this stinks. No, it doesn't stink. It really doesn't. You know why it doesn't stink? Because my mother's happy. For the first time in years, she's happy. Ross is happy. Good things are happening to them, and I did that. That's a good thing. But I don't think I'm buying you as noble. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe I'll get better at it. <laughs> He's like, got a good book out of it. No. You got a great book out of it. I almost messed it up, Harley. I really did. I thought for a minute that there was something there for me and Ross still, and I... But I got out. Got out just in time. You know, you can't... You can't keep hiding up here, Blake, especially not with the kids. Harley, I had to get out of town, otherwise I would have... I'll tell you what. I'm almost finished with my book. One more chapter. As soon as I'm finished, I'm, I'm going home with the boys. I'll be there by Christmas. 
good. That's good. But in the meantime, why don't you just call Ross and tell him this? I just can't talk to Ross. It would be trouble if I talked to Ross. She has a high... Hoping, um, well, Rick said that he gave her a new medication. That's right. It's not working? No, we didn't say that. We don't know yet. Oh, poor thing. It's like she's not even there. It's just so shocking. All right, you know what? I don't want to hear you talking like that. I would appreciate it if you'd leave. Right now. Okay. Okay, Matt. I'm very sorry. I just came in here to tell you that Vanessa will be in my prayers. Matt, Matt, you've got to hear me. I've got, I've got to make you hear me. She knows that I killed Ben. And there's no telling what she's going to do. You can't talk, Vanessa. I'll be watching. You know something, this, uh, this evening has not turned out at all as I anticipated. Here we are sitting on a park bench eating hot dogs, talking about Riva, no. and I am very sorry. Hey, no, it was a great hot dog. <laughs> Besides, I'm the one who brought it up. Josh, don't feel guilty about thinking about Reva. You just, you can't forget somebody that's, that's been that important to you. I don't think I'd like you very much if you could. You're a good soul, you know that. So, what's your story? Is it just you and Billy and your family? I, I actually, I have a sister named uh, Trish, an older sister. She um, lives in Paris. She has for quite a while now. My mother died when I was very young. Mm -hmm. And my father passed away a couple of years ago. H.B. Lewis. H.B.? Yeah, yeah. He and, uh, he and Billy were quite a, quite a team. He, my dad was a wildcatter. Built the whole business out of nothing. And he was a, a big man. I mean, I mean uh, a bigger than life kind of man. Mm. And uh, every day, every day I miss him very much. And I, I suppose you all just got along famously. Oh, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> no, what? Never mind, I don't even want to go there. No, it was, it was great. It was great. Uh, my daddy was my daddy, and Billy was always Billy. You know, he was, he was very athletic when he was younger. He played football. He was All-American three years in a row. Could have played pro football. Hmm. In fact, he could have done a lot of things if he could have just sort of uh, gotten out of his own way. Oh, I see. I see. And what about you? I left. It's hard for me to believe now, but there was a time when I didn't want anything to do with either one of them. So I took off on my own to do my own thing. She came back? Yeah. Yeah, I ran the company, actually. After my dad left, he, um, he wanted to go see the world before he, um, before he passed away. And then, of course, Philip managed to take over the company, and now I'm starting something brand new, and yada, yada, yada. So I, guess I sound like a mess, don't I? No. no, no you, you don't. You sound really brave. And, and you sound bigger than either one of those men you're talking about. So... I bet that your father would be so proud of you right now. Um, you know what? It's getting late. I, I better, I better get home. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you know, um, maybe next time we'll get you out there on those skates. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be next I mean, time. Uh, assuming, of course. Uh, 
<laughs> you, you want there to be a next time? I, I, I would love that. Um, I love that a lot. You do still have feelings for me, don't you? You're going to sacrifice Cassie into that? Cassie doesn't feel like she's being sacrificed into anything this Because all. you've been lying about me. I'm afraid we haven't even been talking about you, Reva. Not until you found and forced yourself into our conversation. At least now I know how you felt for all those years, right? I wouldn't want that for anyone. Hey, no, look, you've earned the right. I don't want that. It's okay. I don't want to hurt you. You just want me to go away. Wish you'd never met me. I wish that I could go back to the life I had before. That I could wish away these feelings I have for you because I would. I would if I could. Harley, for coming over like this. I really appreciate it. Are you sure everybody's okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Philip's okay. They're all okay. It's just you that I'm worried about. I'm fine. I got my big guy here. I got both of them. Well, good. Hey, do you think that uh, you're going to be home in time to see Santa Claus come to your house? Yes. Yes, he's going to be in his bed in time for Santa to come crawling down that chimney. I promise. I'm just going to finish the book mm -hmm. and um you'll be home in time for christmas okay okay Great. good i'm glad good luck with all your writing thank you and you know i'm just a phone call away i'm fine plenty of food and speaking of phone calls maybe you should just call ross so that he's not worried about his voice <clears throat> can't can't yes you can because you know what it's really late at night you probably won't even get him he's probably asleep he'll get his voicemail no no i i would get him no i don't think that you would and even if you did it wouldn't be a big deal because it's so late you'd have a one minute conversation you tell them that the boys are fine and they'll be home for christmas no, that's it that wouldn't be it <laughs> it would be it and i think that you can handle it hey let me ask you a question how would you feel if someone took your two boys and you didn't know where they were out of my mind of course you'd be out of your mind that's probably how ross feels so why don't you put his mind at ease and that's it i'll think about it okay good i'll take that as a yes thanks harley uh-huh you know blake it's always like pulling teeth with you i know bye 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 <laughs> Like to love someone beyond all reason. And 
I know what those feelings can do. It could hurt you and the person that you say you love. I do love Michelle. Good. I'm glad you do. But you're not going to do her any good in jail, are you? Ross, I don't care what happens to me. Oh, please don't say that. I don't have a life not without any jail. Yes, you do. Believe it or not, you do. You will not die if you are not with Michelle. You will still be here. But specifically, where are you? That's what matters. I'm sorry I wasted my time. Anyway. If I can't find a way to represent Michelle, I want you both to understand the enormous risk. Of course we do. We do. All right, then, if you're willing, I'll do it. Thank you. Ross, you're saving my marriage. You saved anything, Danny, all right? And I cannot promise you how this is going to work. I, t I know. I understand. But Michelle's chances are a lot better now. I'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you. Ross Marler. Ross, it's me. Blake, where the hell are you? I don't want to run a marathon. I don't want to go... I got the biggest, fattest turkey I could find. I know what you're saying. I, you know, well, look, it comes with directions and one of those little pop-up doomajiggies that let you know when, when it's done, so I should, I should be okay. Maureen keeps saying, drumstick, Daddy. I want drumstick. I was reading her story one night, and this little boy wanted the drumstick from the chicken or something. Anyway, this drumstick's about the size of her head. I'll take pictures for you. You won't have to miss them. Or better yet, you could just wake up and come and have Christmas dinner with your husband and your little girl. That'd be just about the best Christmas present I ever had. You love her so much, Matt. I can use that. Blake, where are you? I'm fine. The boys are fine. I just wanted you to know I didn't... I, I didn't do anything crazy or stupid. I just... I needed a, a few days with them alone. I hope you understand. Uh, they're right here. You want to say hi to your big guy? Okay, hold, hold on. Say hi. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Jason. Why don't you give the phone back to Mom, okay? He sounds sleepy. Yeah, he is. I'm, I'm going to put him back to bed. Ross, I'll have them home for Christmas. Good. Okay, so, um... Blake, I talked to Joe. I had a nice conversation with him, his girlfriend. He denies that that baby is his. I know. I know. He called here today. And, um... Oh, Ross, he's ending it with that other woman. It's very complicated. He is a deadbeat. Are you still trying to work this out? Ross, I have to go. I do. I've got to put the boys to bed. I'll explain it all when I get back to town, okay? All right, bye. You know what, honey? Honey, we're just going to be Darlene and one more day, okay? Until we finish the book. And then, I promise you, I promise you, we'll get you home in time for Christmas. Blake is Darlene? What the hell is going on? And I don't want to push you away. I don't want to hurt you. Oh. Hi, Mom. Mara, honey, this is Prince Richard. I know who he is. I'm sorry. It was cold outside. I'll, I'll wait no, for no, Hang on, Cassie. Uh, no, we Reva and I have come to an understanding. I'll take you back to Towers now. No. I'll meet you there. I want to spend some time alone with my sister. 